Hi, everybody, and welcome to Worship Online at Aronacoic Presbyterian on this Christmas Eve. I'm glad you're with us today and that we can still worship together and celebrate the coming of Christ. Let us worship God. Our first scripture reading today comes from Luke, chapter 1, verses 39 through 45. In those days, Mary set out and went with haste to a Judean town in the hill country, where she entered the house of Zechariah and greeted Elizabeth. When Elizabeth heard Mary's greeting, the child leaped in her womb, and Elizabeth was filled with the Holy Spirit and exclaimed with a loud cry, Blessed are you among women, and blessed is the fruit of your womb. And why has this happened to me, that the mother of my Lord comes to me? For as soon as I heard the sound of your greeting, the child in my womb leaped for joy. And blessed is she who believed that there would be a fulfillment of what was spoken to her by the Lord. In this Advent season, we have waited for the coming of Christ. We have waited with hope, because Christ is our hope and salvation. We have waited in peace because Christ is our Prince of Peace. We have waited with joy, remembering that the angels brought good news of great joy for all the people. We have waited with love, remembering that it was out of God's great love for us that Christ was sent into the world. Our wait is almost over.
us pray. Great God, as you came at night when all was still, so enter into our lives this night. Illumine our paths with the light of Christ's presence. Fill us with your hope, peace, joy, and love. Amen. Our next scripture reading today comes from Isaiah chapter 9, starting with verse 1. But there will be no gloom for those who are in anguish. In the former time, he brought into contempt the land of Zebulun and the land of Naphtali. But in the latter time, he will make glorious the way of the sea, the land beyond the Jordan, Galilee of the nations. The people who walked in darkness have seen a great light. Those who live in a land of deep darkness, on them light has shined. You have multiplied the nation, you have increased its joy. They rejoice before you as with joy at the harvest, as people exult when dividing plunder. For the yoke of their burden and the bar across their shoulders, the rod of their oppressor, you have broken as on the day of Midian. For all the boots of the tramping warriors and all the garments rolled in blood shall be burned as fuel for the fire. For a child has been born for us, a son given to us. Authority rests upon his shoulders, and he is named Wonderful Counselor, Mighty God, Everlasting Father, Prince of Peace. His authority shall grow, and con shall grow continually, and there shall be endless peace for the throne of David and his kingdom. He will establish and uphold it with justice and with righteousness from this time onward and forevermore. The zeal of the Lord of hosts will do this.
Our next reading comes from the Gospel of Luke, chapter 2, starting with verse 1. In those days a decree went out from Emperor Augustus that all the world should be registered. This was the first registration, and was taken while Quirinius was governor of Syria. And all went to their own towns to be registered. Joseph also went from the town of Nazareth in Galilee to Judea, to the city of David called Bethlehem because he was descended from the house and family of David. He went to be registered with Mary, to whom he was engaged and who was expecting a child. While they were there, the time came for her to deliver her child, and she gave birth to her firstborn son and wrapped him in bands of cloth and laid him in a manger, because there was no place for him in the inn. In that region there were shepherds living in the fields, keeping watch over their flocks by night. Then an angel of the Lord stood before them, and the glory of the Lord shone around them, and they were terrified. But the angel said to them, Do not be afraid, for see, I am bringing you good news of great joy for all the people. To you is born this day in the city of David a Savior, who is the Messiah, the Lord. This will be a sign for you. You will find a child wrapped in bands of cloth and lying in a manger. And suddenly there was with the angel a multitude of heavenly hosts praising God and saying, Glory to God in the highest heaven, and on earth peace among those whom he favors. When the angels had left them and gone into heaven, the shepherds said to one another, Let us go now to Bethlehem and see this thing that has taken place, which the Lord has made known to us. So they went with haste and found Mary and Joseph and the child lying in the manger. When they saw this, they made known what had been told them about this child, and all who heard it were amazed at what the shepherds told them. But Mary treasured all these things and pondered them in her heart. The shepherds returned, glorifying and praising God for all they had heard and seen, as it had been told them. As I think about the Christmas story, and as I think about God's work in our lives, I wonder if sometimes God's purpose is just to blow our socks off. On this Christmas night, we celebrate the birth of the baby Jesus in Bethlehem to mom and dad, Mary and Joseph, who had traveled there for a census of the whole land. And of course, baby Jesus had to be laid in a manger for his first bed. And then his first visitors were the shepherds, who had been informed of his arrival by the angels. Specifically, they were told that this would be good news of great joy for all the people. To you is born this day in the city of David a Savior, who is the Messiah, the Lord. This was, I imagine, a big surprise for all of them. Because they'd just been out in the fields, tending to their flocks, which... I assume they would have thought would have been a quiet night. But then they were interrupted by some angels. And so once again, I am drawn to the book of Isaiah, which we spent quite a, few, quite a bit of time in these past few Advent weeks. And even though it was written hundreds of years before, I think it helps us understand and shapes our understanding of Jesus in the Christian tradition. This came at a time when the Israelites, the Israelite kingdom, was fractured. It had split in two because of a disagreement of who the rightful king was. The kingdom of Israel was to the north and the kingdom of Judah was to the south. And sometimes, even though they were all the same people, they fought amongst each other. Eventually, the Assyrians became powerful and invaded and defeated the northern kingdom of Israel. And this was permitted by God because the folks had disobeyed the Lord for generations and generations and had not heeded repeated warnings. And the people of the southern kingdom knew how this unfolded and they were being warned not to follow the same path as their northern contemporaries. But chapter 9 comes as a prophecy of hope for a new king one day who through God's power would bring unity and peace into the land. And that first verse gives some notes of geography and if it's mapped out, it covers the entire land of the Israelite kingdom, suggesting that this new king would rule over unified Israel. Another thing is this imagery about light 
So through this king, verse 1, it says, There will be no more gloom for those who are in anguish. And then verse 2, The people who walked in darkness have seen a great light. Those who have lived in a land of deep darkness, on them light has shined. So that sounds good as well. There's unity, there's light, and it's darkness. It sounds good. Then there's this imagery of the yoke or a bar across their shoulders that is being broken. It's the rod of their oppressors. It says, broken on the day of Midian. And this is hearkening back to Israelites' history in the book of Judges when God defeated the Midianites who were pressing the Israelite people. And then on top of that, there would be a sign of this child being born. So some speculate this was the birth of a future Israelite king, possibly King Hezekiah, who would come to rule over the kingdom of Judah. And he was a pretty good king. Not perfect, but pretty good. And then verses 6 and 7 could be a suggestion that this new royal child would be a sign that the Lord was really with the people, also known as the Wonderful Counselor, Mighty God, Everlasting Father, and Prince of Peace. And because God was with them, the kingdom of this coming king would be one of peace, justice, and righteousness. Now, even though this prophecy was written many years before and possibly about King Hezekiah when he was born, we as Christians find it very helpful in understanding Jesus, our king who was born this night in Bethlehem and who ushered in this new dawn of his eternal kingdom. Now, the verse that jumps out to me is verse 5. Where it says, for all the boots of the tramping warriors and all the garments rolled in blood shall be burned as fuel for the fire. So it's part of this vision of a new era where God's people wouldn't have to worry anymore about war and repelling invaders. It would be an era of peace. They turn all that gear in for the, all that gear for war. They turn it in and it would be fuel for the fire because they wouldn't need it anymore. Christ's kingdom that he has ushered in has brought something new as well. Because it is not about armies and who has the most power. It's not about violence or strength. It's about God's healing, God's presence, God's peace, God's gift of new life to the world. It is something different. A departure from the same old thing. A departure from darkness, from hopelessness different than what had come before, and different what the people were used to. The shepherds certainly had an interesting night, something surprising. So for Mary and Joseph, their lives were upended. This was something new, something out of the ordinary. Jesus changed everybody's lives when he came onto the scene. Have you ever experienced something in your life where you think, whoa, that was, that was a revelation? You see something you've never experienced before and your socks are blown off or your mind is blown. Well, I like food, so I'll give you a food example. It's amazing to me how many different sandwich combinations there are in the world. I mean, I grew up with peanut butter and jelly, peanut butter and honey, peanut butter and bananas if I was adventurous, ham, turkey, roast beef, tuna, egg salad, French dip. But I remember, though, when my dad brought home this recipe for us called the Elvis sandwich. Ever heard of that? So peanut butter, banana, and bacon on buttered toast, which is heated on a pan. That is really good. Maybe not the healthiest thing to eat, but it was good. And a combination that I had never thought of before. Another sandwich that I had never known about growing up was the pickle and cheese sandwich. Ever heard of this one? So apparently it's a very popular British sandwich. Again, my mind was blown when I heard about this. It's a very simple combination, very easy to make. Tastes good. And yet... Something I had never considered before, never heard of growing up. Another sandwich, or rather a type of sandwich that I was discovered when I was in New Jersey near the Rutgers University campus, is this thing called fat sandwiches. 
and sold in food trucks that were strategically placed just across from the university campus, and they were nicknamed the grease trucks. The whole idea is an all-in-one sandwich. So an example of this would be they would get Italian hoagie bread, and inside they put cheese steak and lettuce, and then chicken fingers and mozzarella sticks and french fries and ketchup, all in one sandwich. Truly all in one. And this was shocking to me. To put the sides of the sandwich that you would normally eat alongside of it into the sandwich. But that also was very good. Didn't exactly feel healthy after eating the whole thing, but it was delicious. And that was a revelation to me because I had never thought of it in that way before, that you could even eat it in that way. Far beyond what I grew up with as traditional. In a similar way, I really do think that one of the ways in which Jesus works is to break us out of the ruts we get into, any patterns of behavior that are not good for us, any places in life where it feels like we're stuck, in order to show us a new way of approaching life. I really do think Jesus blew people's socks off in his ministry. He surprised a lot of people, threw them for a loop. And I think that's exemplified in the Christmas story when he came to this earth to unsuspecting shepherds, to a very surprised Mary and Joseph, and like the description of the king in Isaiah, ushered in this new kingdom of God's gracious power and reign, putting the old things behind. So remember, once again, Christ is with you today, yes, even in 2020, with the power to break us out of the same old thing, the places where we feel stuck, that have maybe held us down, in order that we might experience God in a new way. And so this is my prayer for you on this Christmas Eve, that you experience the power of Christ once again in your lives. Amen.
now hear the words of the one who invites you to this table. Jesus said, I am the bread of life. Whoever comes to me will never be hungry, and whoever believes in me will never be thirsty. Blessed are those who hunger and thirst for righteousness, for they will be filled. Let us pray. O holy God, creator and ruler of the universe, we give you our praise and thanks this Christmas Eve. At the right time, you sent your son, Jesus Christ, to be our savior. He is your word to us, dwelling with you from all eternity, and yet who became flesh and dwelt among us, full of grace and truth, that we might behold your glory. We bless you, Jesus Christ our Lord, born in humility, you have come to rule all. Helpless as an infant, you showed the power of love. Poor in the things of this world, you brought the wealth of your grace. Rejected by some, you welcome all who seek you. Dying and rising, you have given us new life. And so, Holy Spirit, would you be upon these gifts of bread and wine, that the bread we break and the cup we bless may be the communion of the body and blood of Christ. Empower us to be Christ's presence in the world, just as Christ is with us. Keep us faithful in your service until Christ comes in final victory, and when we shall feast with all your saints in the joy of your eternal realm. Would you be with each one and each family this night? May we know the joy of Christ's presence no matter where we are, even though we are separated. We pray for those who are working this night, for those who are sick, for those who are caring for the sick, for all who cannot see their loved ones. May your light still be brought into our lives, even when it seems dark. And in faith, we echo the prayer you taught us to pray, saying, Our Father, who art in heaven, hallowed be thy name. Thy kingdom come, thy will be done on earth as it is in heaven. Give us this day our daily bread, and forgive us our debts, as we forgive our debtors. And lead us not into temptation, but deliver us from evil. For thine is the kingdom, and the power, and the glory forever. Amen. And so we remember, even as we celebrate the beginning of Christ's life and ministry among us, we remember that at the end of his life, on the night of his arrest, he dipped bread, and after giving thanks, he broke it and gave it to his disciples, saying, Take, eat, this is my body broken for you. Do this in remembrance of me. And after supper, he took the cup, saying, This cup is the new covenant sealed in my blood shed for you for the forgiveness of sins. Whenever you drink of it, do this in remembrance of me. And so every time we eat of this bread and drink of this cup, we are proclaiming the Lord's saving death and resurrection until he comes again. And these are God's gifts to all of you. Wherever you are in your faith, whether you feel close to God, far away, doubtful or sure, these are God's gifts that this good news of Christ's coming, Christ's gifts to you, may be sealed in your hearts. The body of Christ broken for you. the blood of Christ shed for you. Would you join me in prayer? Gracious Lord, on this Christmas Eve, we thank you for the, your gift of coming to us. And we thank you for the gift of your life, of your ministry of your path to the cross and your resurrection, which gives us life this day. May the power of your presence be with all of us this night. And in your name we pray, amen. From John chapter one. In the beginning was the word, and the Word was with God, 
and the Word was God. He was in the beginning with God. All things came into being through him, and without him not one thing came into being. What has come into being in him was life, and the life was the light of all people. The light shines in the darkness, and the darkness did not overcome it.
And now may the grace of our Lord Jesus Christ, the love of God, and the fellowship of the Holy Spirit be with you now and forevermore. And Merry Christmas. Amen.